What's going on today, guys? We are back in the garage for another tool review slash um, Milwaukee versus Snap-on again. Uh, today we're gonna be doing kind of an unconventional test. Um, we have the straight uh, Snap-on uh, die grinder, and then we have the cutoff wheel um, that is a little uh, more unconventional. Uh, I know that Milwaukee does make uh, one similar to this. Uh, maybe in, in a few videos, uh, I'll go out and buy the Milwaukee version and we'll do another test with those. But we're gonna see which one is overall better with the style of the two. Um, since um, Snap-on doesn't make uh, one just like this, uh, we're gonna see which one uh, performs a little better uh, overall and we're gonna do uh, just a couple of tests not a whole lot <clears throat> uh, but we'll, let's get down to um, the specs on both of them <clears throat> so on the left we've got the 14.4 uh, micro lithium brushless inline because it's straight inline die grinder uh, on the snap-on website without the tool or without the battery it is $271.95. Uh, the part number is CGRS861. And then the color code will be after that, but if you type that in, all of them will come up. Um, this one comes with uh, an eighth inch and a quarter inch collet. Um, it has a push button spindle lock which is nice so it's got a push button here so you'll push it and then it locks this so you're able to uh, take this off here uh, it does come with uh, some uh, a plier a pair of uh, <clears throat> pliers that come with it uh, that wrap around here and when you <clears throat> sorry push this in here twist this off and this is able to come off so you can put whatever you want on this one um, it has variable speed, uh, one all the way to seven. Um, <clears throat> the variable speed is 10,000, which is one, and 30,000, which is seven. Um, now, I personally, whenever I cut anything, it's always on one or two. I may get up to three, uh, but I never go above there because <clears throat> a lot of times, depending on how long, whatever you're using, especially if you're using something like this, um, with this here, uh, it says the max RPMs that they want you to go here is 25,000. So, so <clears throat> when you go above here, when you go above like four or five here, if everything isn't balanced perfectly, you're gonna get a lot of vibration in everything here. <clears throat> so I wouldn't go above three or four with it. Um, we'll probably just do a test uh, around two or three today, because that's gonna match the RPMs for here. Um, now without the battery, it weighs 1.7 pounds. Uh, without the battery, it is 11.4 uh, inches tall. Uh, it looks it's about the the thicker side of it, maybe inch and a half to two inches. Uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> it's made in China. Uh, and it says that right on the website, the country of origin is China, which is really disappointing um, considering that you're gonna spend <clears throat> $280 on a company that prides themselves with their tools to be made in America. Um, which is pretty disappointing. Um, and also, we'll see if we can get it in here. Let's turn this light off. I don't know if we're going to be able to get that in there. But on the bottom here, it does say made in China. <clears throat> uh, it comes with a one-year warranty from the date of purchase. So if you buy it off your tool truck guy, make sure he puts the serial number in. Uh, just in case there's any issues, you can swap it out within a year. Now, let's talk about the competitor, which is the Milwaukee M12 Lithium Ion, also brushes, cutoff saw. So we have a mini, uh, we got a die grinder, and we got a cutoff saw here. 
Um, the Milwaukee without the battery is $139 from Home Depot, which is the website that I see is about the, uh, the lowest price out of all of the Milwaukee stuff. Uh, that part number is 20, 2522-20. Um, it, it is uh, only a one speed. It does uh, 20,000 RPMs. So just in between um, the snap-on, um, it weighs 1.5, two pounds without battery. So just a little bit uh, lighter. Um, and it's uh, just over seven inches tall um, without battery, like I said. Um, as you can see, the Milwaukee uh, is definitely different. Uh, it does have a four and a half inch uh, wide here by about an uh, inch and three quarters here. So it's definitely uh, unconventional uh, when testing both of these, uh, but that's why I decided to do that. Uh, like I said before, it's got a one speed. Uh, now, unlike the Snap-on, um, it does have, the tool itself, does have a five-year warranty with it, uh, which is really nice. Um, <clears throat> so if you have any issues with it, send it off to uh, the, one of the Milwaukee sites and uh, they'll have it either fixed for you or they'll just send you a brand new one. Um, and with the cases that I've done and I've heard about, a lot of times they just send you a brand new one. Um, now let's talk about <clears throat> the differences and the tools themselves. Uh, with the snap-on, like we've said before, it's got the push button, and then you're able to uh, put the wrench here that they that it comes with, and take it off there. Or if you have like this, the cutoff wheel, you push that in, and you're going to stick the screwdriver in there. Now I would get the biggest, the fattest screwdriver you can, just so you're not going to strip this out. But that's how you take those off and on. And with the Milwaukee, it's a little bit different. <clears throat> it has an Allen head, which is, I believe, a 7 16 So you're going to push the button here on the top, and that's going to lock it. And it's not going to allow it to move. And then it's also reverse thread here. So righty, loosey, lefty, tidy. Uh, and it also does come with uh, the tool as well but we're not gonna take those off. <clears throat> um, what is nice about the Milwaukee is you have forward, and then you have a switch here, push it in. As you can see, the forward is lit up white, and then now the reverse. So you can also do it reverse, which is nice if you're in a, a, a tight spot and you don't want it to be, uh, to be in forward, and the uh, sparks coming at you if you're in a tight spot and you kind of have to have your head in a certain spot you can put it uh, reverse and you can throw the sparks in the other way which is really nice about that one um, <clears throat> they both have uh, LED or I should say just lights on it so this one is full charge and then the Milwaukee here has got the four lights here so that one's a full charge now we're gonna go ahead and do, oh, well, one more thing. On the website, they actually suggested uh, if you're gonna put a cutoff wheel on it to do a two inch cutoff wheel. Uh, that probably has to do with the vibrations when you have it above uh, a certain number here. Uh, so it only does two inches. Uh, now they both do have brand new blades on them. They are both the same brand, so we're not gonna have any issues with that. And we are gonna see uh, if it can and how long it takes <clears throat> to cut through some of this or most of this and uh, how easy they are when doing it. So first, we'll do the snap-on. Um, and whenever you're cutting anything or grinding or anything like that, always throw on a pair of safety glasses. Um, they will definitely save you in the long run. I have a couple, had a couple of instances where I've gotten metal in my eye and it's no fun. You go to the doctor, they put your head in a restraint 
and then the doctor literally takes tweezers and grabs the metal out of your eyeball so <clears throat> it's uh definitely not fun so we're going to put it here i think that'll be good and you can see we're gonna we'll do the snap on so we're gonna put it and we're gonna put the snap on we'll start it off on two because like i've said i've never really gone too high with it <laughs> And the snap on is only one direction. So we're just going to do. Let's, uh, we'll grab a clamp here. And we'll clamp it so we don't have any issues. Not going nowhere. And uh, we'll see what we can do here. If it gets uh, to the point where there's too much pressure put on it, it does have a safety switch in it and it cuts it off. Now, when it cuts it off, uh, you have to shut it off and you got to turn it back on. Now, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. shut off there again and we'll show you here it's still on here so you got to shut it back off and we'll turn it to like three we'll go three and a half and that's as high as I'll go because like I said the vibration in the handle is is quite a bit <laughs> It doesn't matter how high you go on the speed here, it, it's always just going to cut off. Um, uh, I'm not really that impressed uh, with the cutoff wheel attachment on here. So we're going to turn it on one and we'll give it another try. <laughs> So now, with that said, um, as you can see, it got through most of the top there, and it got through just a little bit of the side, and it eh, didn't even get through the other end. Uh, so that's a little disappointing when it comes to the auto shutoff uh, feature on this. Now, they both have them on there, uh, but this one was definitely... Uh, I was definitely not impressed with how quick they it got shut off. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go test the Milwaukee. Now with the Milwaukee, um, the disadvantage of it is the head is so big here. So, I mean, I can still get to it. But if you needed to do a small place, uh, the snap-on would be better to do in a small place. So <clears throat> we'll adjust it here. And we're going to do just on the side of here. So we're not going to use the one that uh, Snap-on used. Uh, we're going to put it, we're going to leave it in forward. And we're going to see uh, how it goes. As you can see, the Milwaukee cut off, uh, but all you got to do to restart it is pull uh, your finger off and you can restart it. Um, I I was putting a little more pressure uh, on it to try to get it to shut off. Um, it seemed like the Milwaukee didn't shut off uh, as quick, uh, so we'll we'll give it uh, three times, just like we gave the Milwaukee or the Snap-on uh, a few times. <laughs> and as you get deeper into here it's always going to cut off because you have a lot of friction 
uh, on both sides. But as you can see already, that is dug. It's already done the top level and it's already done a little bit in the back and it's done quite a bit in the front. Um, now, the only thing with the Milwaukee is it's only gonna go so deep. That's as deep as it's gonna go because you have this hitting the bottom of it. With the snap-on, you have all the free range from here. So you would be able to get all the way around it in one shot. So we're gonna loosen this up. And we'll give it just one turn. And then now I'm actually gonna put it in the reverse and we're gonna throw the sparks the other way. So, uh, as far as the cutting test, like I said, they were uh, both brand new blades. Um, I think you can get the blades pretty cheap off of uh, Amazon. You get a pack of like 25 or 20 for probably uh, 8 to $12. Um, but as far as... What they both did. So the first line here is the uh, snap-on. And as you can see, it got just a little bit on the tip. It's a little bit hot. And it didn't quite get all the way through. There's a little bit of metal in there. And it just nicked the tip of the edge here. Um, the Milwaukee, as you can see, didn't go all the way through. But it got all the way to the bottom. It cut all the way through here, and it got all the way halfway through here. So it is an unconventional test because you do have uh, two different types of tools. Um, like I said, the snap-on is nice because there's no restriction up here. Uh, so you can cut the metal... Um, with 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 freer uh, with a lot a lot more space, but the Milwaukee uh, does seem to last a little longer. Um, I don't know if it's the cutoff is a little higher uh, temp wise or because of the motor is right here instead of um, the motor does look a little thicker at least the casing for the motor. So I would assume the motor would be a little bit bigger. Um, so with my opinion, uh, like I said, it is unconventional doing two tests like these, uh, but I would, I myself would go with the Milwaukee. Um, I would pick the Milwaukee, uh, because of the cutoff time that it had. Uh, it did definitely cut more. It does have the forward and reverse, which is nice. Uh, it does only have the one variable speed, but, um, uh, as far as price, and warranty with that again i'm gonna go with the milwaukee um like i said before uh they're both made in china but for something that is for a company that is um proud to say that most of their power tools and uh hand tools are made in america they're both here made in china um <clears throat> the Snap-on is $270 with a one-year warranty without the battery. And the Milwaukee is a five-year warranty uh, for $139. So you can almost buy two of these for the price of just one of these. <clears throat> and I think it's overall a little bit better. Um, but it's really depending on the battery situation. Do you already have Snap-on? Or do you already have Milwaukee? Um, that's what a lot. That's what I say a lot of times when it comes to the uh, tools. Um, one might be better than the other, but if you have a bunch of Snap-on stuff, I wouldn't necessarily start out and going and buy everything Milwaukee. Uh, in this case, the Milwaukee wins it for me. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns. Go ahead and throw them in the bottom. I'll have uh, uh, all the links and the descriptions of every uh, of the two tools on here. Um, 
And if you guys want to see more uh, between Milwaukee and Snap-on and some more reviews, hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time.